Hello friends, uh, welcome back and this lesson is going to be very important. We are going to talk about uh, most frequently asked questions about the exam, some of the exam information and how you can best utilize this course to clear DP 900 certification. So in this course, we are going to talk about the syllabus of the exam. What are the skills Azure are going to measure in this exam? What is the prerequisite for DP 900? What are the exam details, different types of questions we are going to see in this exam? What are general tips for the exam and how to prepare for the exam or how you can best use this course to clear DP 900? And in the end, I'm going to give you four badge challenge to complete this course. Alright, so in your favorite uh, search engine, if you just uh, search for exam DP 900, very first link you are going to see this official page of Microsoft about this exam. And this has some of very important information about the exam, like what it is going to cover, who should take it, how you can schedule this exam, what is the cost. And if you scroll down below, here you can see the skills measured in this exam. And you can see that we have four different sections here, core data concept, relational data, non-relational data, and analytics workload. And if you click here, download exam skills outline, you can see all these sections in detail that what is going to be covered in this exam. So for example, in core data concepts, Azure wants you to have very good understanding about the basic, the fundamental of data. Like what is a batch data, streaming data, or what is the difference between them? What is the characteristic of a relational database? What is data visualization? What are different types of chart, ETL, ELT? All these very basic fundamental concepts about the data we are going to cover in this section. And in the next section, we have the relational database. So basically, what are different types of database we have on premises? You know, we have MariaDB, we have Azure database, we have the uh, MySQL, we have PostGRE, and all these different databases, how we can implement in Azure. What are the deployment options I have to implement these databases? What are the different security options we have? How I can connect with these databases? What are the different tools I have to connect with these databases? What is the SQL language? What is the, you know, some very basic fundamental difference between a data definition language and data manipulation language? What is the syntax? how we can use this language to connect with all these different relational databases within Azure. And in the next section, similarly, we are going to talk about the NoSQL database. So for example, what exactly is non-relational database? What are different types of non-relational database? And how we can implement those in Azure? And while discussing that, we will discuss about the Cosmos DB APIs, we will discuss about the table storage, blob storage, file storage, how we can provision, how we can create these resources in Azure. What are the different security components we have? How we can connect with these different resources? What are different tools we can use to manage these non-SQL databases within Azure? Azure. So this whole section is going to dedicate on known relational database. And the next one we have is the about analytics. Now what exactly is analytics workload? How is it different from transactional workload? What is the difference between batch and real time? What is data warehouse? What is the modern data warehouse architecture? And what are some of these technologies which we use in analytics workload like data lake or synapse or data breaks, HD inside, data factory, different components of data factory, HD inside. So all these technologies, introduction of all these technologies actually just understand what exactly these technologies are. And finally, we will talk about the reporting tool, Microsoft Power BI, different types of reports and dashboard and workflow um, in Power BI. So basically this whole section is going to be dedicated on analytics workload. Now I want to remind you that this certification is also for those people who want to enter into the database field. So some of these concepts like what is the table, what are the columns, what are the index. If you're coming from database background, maybe SQL developer or administrator or BI or data warehousing background, some of these concepts are super easy for you. They are very, very basic concept. And it is possible that you may find it boring. 
So I would suggest you, you can either skip those lessons or you can just speed up those lessons with the 2x speed or something and just directly jump to the questions and see that if you are comfortable answering those questions. But, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we understand that this is important for those people who are not coming from database background. For them, all these concepts are very relevant. All right, so let's move forward. And the next we have is the prerequisite for DP 900 exam. And as I said, there is absolutely no prerequisite. This is the fundamental exam. This is the basic exam. And after this, you can go to the data engineer side, or you can go to the administrator side, or you can go to the data scientist side. With that said, this exam is also not necessary. You can directly take 200, 300 or 100 exam. Sometimes a student asks that, do I need to know any language for this certification? Do I need to know Python or Java or PowerShell or any other language? The answer is no. No prior knowledge for any language or in fact any technology is required before you start uh, taking this course DP900. Once again, this is very fundamental course. It will tell you what are different types of database and how to implement those database in Azure. That's it. All right, so duration of this exam is 60 minutes and you're going to see somewhere around 45 to 55 questions in this exam. So you can see that you do not have a lot of time if you stuck with the particular question. I would suggest you to move forward, mark that question, come back because you're going to have only 60 minutes and you're going to have 700 points out of 1000 points to clear this exam. And I'm going to talk about a little bit more in the next slide. So. Let's talk about uh, what are different types of questions we are going to face in this exam. So first one is very obvious, multiple choice questions. You are going to have few um, options and out of that one option will be correct. Multiple select questions, so out of given options, more than one option will be correct. Drop down kind of questions, so you will be having a sentence and you have to complete that sentence and uh, you will have drop down. You will have to choose one option out of drop down to complete that sentence true false type of question where you are going to have a couple of uh, statements and you have to choose the true or the false statement out of those and now remind you that there is no case study there is no lab in this exam so that is probably a good news for you now let's move forward and next we have general exam tips so as i said we are going to have only 60 minutes to complete uh, maybe around 50 55 questions so you want to make sure that you do not spend a lot of time on one question if you're confused if you're not sure maybe just mark that question and move forward and come back after you complete uh, all the questions and then another strategy which is always uh, very helpful is to eliminate wrong answers. So let's say if there are five options and you're not sure about the right answer, but you may be sure about uh, two or three wrong answers. So eliminate those. So you will remain with uh, maybe two or three answers and out of that you can make your best guess. So there are, you know, 30 to 50 percent chance that you are going to get it right. And then you can look for the keywords uh, in the questions. So sometimes uh, even if you do not understand the question or you do not know the answer, but if you find that keyword, so for example, if you find SMB protocol, as soon as you see SMB protocol, you know that uh, Azure file storage is the right answer. As soon as you see the graph, you know that the Gremlin API, Cosmos API is the right answer. And I'm going to tell you all these uh, keywords uh, throughout the course. But my point is, look for those keywords uh, when you look for the question. And once again, the marking system is that you need 700 points out of 1000 points. But that does not mean that you have to clear or correct 70% of questions. First of all, every question mark different points. So one question may be 50 points. Another question may be of, let's say, 20 points. So you may have two wrong answers for these two 20 points question. But if you correct one 50 point question, still you will be getting more points. So it's not exactly 70% questions you have to correct. And the second point is the partial correct answer also have point. So let's say if we have multi select question where you have to select more than one right answer and if you're able to choose, let's say one correct answer and other wrong answer. But for that one correct 
answer you will also get some point it's not like one or zero it's not like whether this question is correct or this question is wrong even the partial right answer you will get the marks and there's no negative markings so of course you have to attempt all the questions you cannot leave any questions and there's an option also to comment on question if some question you find is very confusing or you find that the all the answers are wrong or maybe one more than one answer is right so you can um, comment on that question and microsoft may look into that after your exam now the next we are going to talk about how to prepare for this exam now i have given dp 900 exam many times to understand the syllabus to understand the level of questions we are going to get you know in the exam and i want to assure you that this course is very very carefully designed the level of this course is much higher than what you are going to see in the exam in the exam you're not going to have any labs but for almost every concept i will show you how to implement that in the azure portal how to practice that how to practically look that particular concept so that not just for the certification but in general you will have a very good understanding about that particular technology about that particular concept and it will be very helpful for you even in the future when you go for the DP200 or DP300 or DP100 certifications. All this knowledge is going to help you while taking those certification. So if you go through all the videos, if you go through all the quizzes, all the practice question, I guarantee you, you are going to get more than 90% marks in this exam. I have given a further studies material, but you do not need to go that unless you are really interested to learn further or read further i have already taken all the important points from these links all right so let's move forward and now let's say you take the similar course from instructor-led training maybe you'll have to pay a couple of hundred dollar or maybe sometimes thousand dollars some institute even charge thousand dollar for the this certification but here online course you might have paid just few dollars probably less than what you spend on your lunch and you will also have all the flexibility and all the material with you for lifetime. But there is one thing which is lacking in this course. And that is because you have not paid so much, you may not be serious about it. You may not be very disciplined while taking this course. So I want to make sure that you remain disciplined. You remain motivated when you go through this course and make your schedule, maybe one hour daily and four hours over the weekend. And if you do that within 10 to 15 days, you are going to clear this certification and only you can make your schedule. I cannot make your schedule according to your flexibility, make your schedule, stick to it and clear this certification. And I will do my part. So for every module, for every section, I'm going to have this trophy for you. And once you complete that section, you are going to get that. And your target is to complete all these sections and get all these four trophies by the end of this course and clear this certification with over 90% marks. That is your target. All right. So by now, you know everything you need to know about this exam. So I wish you very best of luck for this exam. Thank you.